what is up guys welcome back to another youtube video at the world of ai in today's video we're going to be looking at lava which is a large language and vision assistant and it's basically a research project focused on improving the ability of language models to understand visual information now it is an end-to-end -end trained multi-model that is combined with the vision encoder and vicuna which is another large language model and it is basically transforming based language models to achieve a general purpose of visual as well as language understandings now you might be wondering what is the actual difference between mini gpt and lava well basically both are very similar in a way but both have different objectives and this is something that we'll be covering in today's video but basically we're also going to be going over the white paper and understanding a little bit more about what their actual project is we're also going to be going and taking a deeper dive as to a couple examples of the data as well as actually running a demo as to how it works on their large language model and with that thought guys let us start off with the video but if you guys haven't subscribed please do so guys i post a lot of different content that is appealed to different types of people in the ai world so definitely check out all the content that i have as it's very beneficial for you guys and i would highly recommend that you subscribe turn on the notification bell like the video as it will definitely help the algorithm out and it will definitely mean a lot to me guys with that thought let's get right into the video so lava is a model that is trained on a diverse set of tasks and it requires to understand both textual and visual inputs which is similar to what mini gpt does now the training enables lava to perform a range of tasks including image captioning visual question answering as well as image retrieval now additionally to this lava has impressed chat capabilities that mimic the natural language understanding as well as response capabilities of a human making it a valuable tool to conventional ai now one of lava's notable achievements is setting the new state of art accuracy on science questionnaire now this is a benchmark data set for evaluating visual question answering systems now this model achieved an accuracy record of i believe 86.2 percent which is basically outperforming the state of art models by significant margin which you can see over here i believe this is another accuracy set for another data set but basically this is the science questionnaire for a, a new synergy of lava as well as gpt4 and it basically outranks other models and we can see that lava with judge as well as with plus gpt4 as a complement is able to do really really good as well as mm caught large so we can see that there it was able to achieve this amazing accuracy and basically it just shows how their system and application is able to perform certain visual basic applications for their large language model now if you saw my video yesterday i covered mini gpt4 which was another visual like basic ai generative content like image segmentation as well as a visual language understanding application and it's basically doing the exact same thing that lava is doing and it's also using the same llm to actually provide the assistant and creating the contextual report with the application now you might be wondering what's this like they're both basically the same thing now what is actually the difference well basically lava and mini gpt are both two different research projects which we talked about uh, mini gpt is obviously focused on with different contributors as well as different research groups whereas lava is basically working with different universities microsoft, microsoft research columbia university as well as different contributors and basically both projects are focused on improving the capabilities of language and visual models now while they have some similarities they also have a couple of dis differences which i'll emphasize a little bit on now lava is a research project which i talked about that aims to improve the ability of language models to understand visual information it does this by training a large scale language model which we saw over here with its data sets and it basically does this by taking a range of diverse set of tasks that requires it to understand both textual and visual input they actually have their model card that emphasizes how much they actually do how much they actually have in terms of data to train based off of image as well as visual visual sorry as well as textual 
uh, reports of data and they basically use this to train their actual application now lava is incorporated a range of state-of-art techniques for training language as well as vision mod modules now this also includes their transformer based model as well as their self-supervised learning and I believe they also incorporated their multitask learning system with the application that is currently in the development. Now, in terms of mini GPT-4, on the other hand, is basically a research group also that focuses on enhancing the capabilities of large language models to understand and generate text as well as image content. It builds upon the success of GPT-3, which is another powerful model developed by OpenAI and extends the incorporated visual information from the actual application now mini gpt4 is designed to be more efficient and scalable than previous large language models which is ena enabling it to work on a broader range of tasks and data sets now in summary both lava and mini gpt are basic like research groups that are focusing on enhancing capabilities of language and vision models but they just differ in like their specific goals as well as the approaches and techniques as to how they have their data sets as well as how they basically apply their application so how does lava actually work well the model is connected to a pre-trained visual encoder like mini gpt4 but this one is connected to clip vit uh dash l slash 14 which is a large language model called vicuna i mean as along with the, another large language model that is vicuna and using a simple projection matrix the model undergoes sorry the model undergoes a two-stage instruction tuning procedure which we can see over here state in the first stage the model undergoes a pre-training for feature alignment now this basically means that the only projection matrix is updated based off the subset of the conceptual captions which are based off the cc3 million now data set, this is another data set that they use. And this stage basically aims to align the visual and language features of the model. In the second stage we can see is the fine tuning end to end. Now this model undergoes the fine tuning from the start process all the way to the end for two different use cases. Now the first use case is the, for the visual chat where Lava is fine tuned on the model instruction following data generated for daily users oriented and on their application. Now this fine tuning process updates both on the projection matrix as well as the large language model which we can see over here. Now the second use case is for the science QA where Lava is fine tuning on a multi model reasoning data set for science domains. Now this fine tuning process also updates on the projection matrix as well as the large language model. Now we can see that in this case with Lava they're focusing on another objective where mini GPT-4 is working on an overall objective with its visual encoder and assistant. So we can see that there's a similar, there's few similarities, but there's also some differences in these two LLMs. Now the Lava 13B Delta V version like zero version model actually is a checkpoint that can be assessed on the Hugging Face model platform. Now let's actually get into some of the actual examples of the visual instruction. And we can see this with the visual input of their application on their demo. So basically they uploaded this picture of something that looks very abnormal. I'm sorry, I can't get a better picture of this, but it's basically something that looks very, very unusual. And what the user asked the actual demo or the application is that what is unusual about this image? And now what the actual processor or the application was able to do is detect is that the unusual aspect of this image is a man ironing clothes on the back of the miniman or van. This is not a typical place to perform this activity as one would usually iron clothes in a more stationary and safe location such as a home using a regular ironing, ironing board. Now you can see that it's able to detect this with its data sets as well as provide such answers as well as analyze such things with its encoder. Now we can also see another image which is it looks like uh, sometimes I just took a picture of the earth from space and a marv and I mar marveled at how beautiful it looks. Basically, it's just like a cookie or like it looks like dough and it's basically replicating the world with this food picture. And basically what the user is asking is that, can you explain this meme in detail? 
and what the actual application has done is actually able to give a detailed response as to what the actual image is using the encoders that it has as well as utilizing the data sets that the actual language model is based off of to get a better idea to understand the actual visual representation by giving it an output of a textual like representation. One thing I really wanted to note is that you're also able to see the difference between other examples of different models. We can see GPT-4 is able to give a response with the actual image, which is not as detailed as what Lava is giving and providing. And we can see this with Blip as well as Open Flamingo on both cases. And obviously, certain times ChatGPT might provide you a better or response, but in most cases, we're able to get the best response with Lava, and which is given with the providing data of accuracy with their performance data. So guys, I'm gonna leave the links down, all the links in the description in terms of its weights, as well as its data sets, model card, uh, the white paper, as well as the blog post and the demo, which I'll be demonstrating in a bit. Uh, one thing I wanted to emphasize is that you can also install this on your local desktop but you can also try the demo on the web browser, which is quite useful. Uh, in terms of installing it, one thing I need to make sure that you guys understand is that you need to have around 16 G 60 GB of CPU to actually run the Lava $13 billion parameter, or not dollar, $10, $13 billion parameter, as well as the Lava 7 billion parameter, which we'll be releasing very shortly. So just to keep that in mind, now, in terms of the demo, what I did was that I found an image off of Google of a dead plant. And what I wanted to ask is that what is wrong with the dead plant and how can I fix it? And now I, what I told the actual application, this was what I inputted and this is what I got as an output. Now, if you saw my previous video on mini GPT for you were able to get responses, but it was it took like 20 minutes. I legit just put this in and I was able to get a response out very very fast within a couple of seconds so that's one of the good things about this application at the moment and now with the output in this image we were supposed to get is that in this image the plant appears to be in poor health when it le when it's leaves dropping on this to the side with this overall plant looking weak and wilted the plant may be lacking essential elements to grow and thrive such as water sunlight or proper nutri nutrients now to fix this problem you should first identify the specific needs for the plant, such as whether it requires more water, sunlight, or specific nutrients. So we can see that it's able to give a detailed response as to what is wrong. And you can basically chat with it with this visual coder, and it's able to output such a detailed response. And this is something that I really wanted to highlight in comparison to what actually mini GPT is doing. So it's a really great supplement as well as something not even a supplement but it's a really great project that is also achieving and enhancing vision assistant with image segmentation as well as the processing of certain applications with this actual large language model so in my opinion both applications are great and overall both are achieving certain things that will be promising and both research projects have been potent to significantly improve the capabilities of language and visual models now, its ability to combine vision as well as textual inputs in a single model and perform a range of tasks is quite remarkable. So I highly, highly recommend that you check this out, guys, as something that they're going to build upon and it will be very beneficial for you guys. So with that thought, guys, I hope you found this video helpful. Please subscribe, comment down anything that you want to see in the future, and please like this video as it will definitely help the video as well as the channel out, guys. Thank you so much for supporting and I'll definitely see you guys next time. Peace out, fellas.